Hi, I'm Liko Paul Pinsano and I'm a developer for Artificial Mind and Movement. I basically uh, am a programmer, I write code, and uh, I'm specialized into physics and uh, special effects. Can you tell us a bit about programming the actual act of dying? What we did for WET, the, the game for Artificial Mind and Movement, was a, uh, an approach where we would have part of it being taken care of by programs, and the other part is an input by artists. And of course, all artists are trained into you know, moving people around in a very realistic way. And some of it is a mocap actually, so it comes from people actually trying to fall on the ground and die. But the most of it was authored by artists. How do you study the movement of people when trying to create a death scene? No, usually you would have some sort of idea. Let's say you want to you know, slash to the belly with a sword. You would have an animator, somebody who would take a character and move it in a very uh, realistic way. But then if you only have that animation, then it won't take into account the environment. So you're gonna need to interact with your environment. That's where the, the physics comes in. Do you strive for drama or reality when doing the programming? It really depends on the project. I mean, animating death can be like in Mario Bros. You know, you just like jump on the mushroom and squish it and that is killing it. But in our game, uh, we wanted something very close to uh, the movie Kill Bill. So we wanted uh, something that was very BC movies, you know, like slashing and the arm going, flaying around with a lot of blood and uh, people clutching their guts because they've been slashed and so forth and having a lot of uh, very strong reaction to being hit or damaged. Does a company put a lot of resources into the death scenes in their video games? Usually death is a very small team. In our case we were two, like an artist and a programmer paired together. It takes quite a time to nail that style because I mean a lot of video games, especially a game like Wet, 80% uh, of the time you'll be killing people so if that doesn't look good well the rest of the game won't look good no matter how much money you throw at it. Can you tell us a bit about the evolution of death in video games? At first we had a lot of animated death, like in Mario Bros. And as we go into a realistic game, then we started adding a lot of simulation physics because these stuff are really hard to animate and you don't get the interaction with your environment. And uh, and I guess now we're, uh, we're up to a point that the behavioral death, where now we, we don't just kill people, we could actually you know hurt them, they fall to the ground, they would get back up and so forth. A lot of people are doing that right now. Does your boss ever come up to you and say, hey, that's too gross or not gross enough and tweak the way you're programming a death scene. So if you publish a game in Germany, let's say they don't they don't want blood unless it's green and from an alien. So you have to remove all the blood from your game and that's an aspect that you have to think about first because some people will say, okay, well, if you have this much violence, then you get the 18 plus rating, let's say, and then you can sell in Walmart and they'll impact on your, uh, on your sales globally. So yeah, you do have to think about uh, certain limits. Thank you very much. It's been quite a pleasure. No problem.